These are my notes for Chem 1 in a nutshell. This is what you'll hear pretty much on your first day of class, whether you're at a community school, big four-year college, Chem is Chem. Uh, here's Chem 1 in a nutshell. So everything that makes our modern world, from computers to electricity, uh, medicine, everything, even biology, has chemistry in it. A strong background is chem in chemistry is absolutely vital to get through the higher levels of bio, medicine, um, even engineering, strangely. Um, everything is strongly based in chemistry. So looking at some definitions of chemistry from several different places, there is no specific one rule, one except the definition of chemistry. So I gave you a few from across the internet and some other textbooks that I have. Um, study of chemistry is the environment on the atomic and molecular scale, this one's mine, or an atomic molecular point of view slash frame of reference. Everything you do in science comes from a specific frame of reference, whether from the macroscopic, like an entire organism, or the microscopic of a cell, or even smaller than that, going on with all the machine stuff that happens inside the cell. Frame of reference is important. So to me, chemistry is a study of our environment on the atomic and molecular scales. From Faye McMurray's book, Chemistry, it's a study of composition, properties, and transformations of matter. And now, here is uh, what's more important. The science that deal from dictionary.com. The science that deals with composition and properties of substances from er elementary forms of matter. I won't read all of them, because you can just pause the video and read my notes. Um, but the thing to note is the word chemistry and the difference between chemical changes and physical changes, but we'll get to that in a few. Um, so if you don't really want to write those out in an exam, if your teacher asks you to define chemistry, just the study of properties and behavior of matter is the short and sweet version of it. So some basic terms that you're going to need to know are elements. An element from is basically the fundamental substance that cannot be chemically changed or broken down into anything similar. Chemically being the key word here. There's a difference between a chemical change and a physical change. A chemical chain is where a change in a substance actually changes the chemicals that are inside. So an element is something that cannot be chemically broken down into a more simple substance. Um, from a different book it shows... Yeah, 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 that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, it's one, let's see what else we got here. One of a class of substances that cannot be separated, oops, let's fix that, into a simpler substance by chemical means. Chemical being the key term here. So There's different means to break things down. There's 114 known elements in the periodic table. Only about 90 occur naturally. All the other ones are synthesized or come from nuclear stuff. Elements are referred to with a chemical symbol, which is, can be one or two letters, and it's important to remember that the first letter is always capitalized. I listed some really common ones here, carbon, silver, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. The symbols for these elements come from both Latin and Greek terms. I know, it's crazy, but that's how they name them. So, there you go. You won't have to memorize all 114 elements. You'll pretty much have a periodic table for every exam. And I'll save the periodic table for it a whole separate video, because that needs its whole separate video. Um, but for what you need to know from a Chem 1 standpoint, is that the rows are called periods, and that's these rows going straight across, and that the columns are called groups. So you got periods going across and columns going up and down. The columns are called groups. Another big term in chemistry is properties. A property is anything that can be used to s describe something. So if a substance is hard, soft, dogs are fluffy, the color of things, what they smell like, those are all properties. And there's different types of properties. There's, there's really two major types that you're going to talk about. Intensive properties, which, what, which does not depend on how much stuff you have. So like the melting point of steel is an intensive property. Uh, 9-11 conspiracy theorists, that's an intensive property. Um, the color of a material, is it shiny, is it dull? Those are all intensive. It doesn't matter how much steel you have, steel is going to have the same properties. Extensive does depend on the amount of the material. Volume, height, weight, um, like a cardboard box, like how big is it, how much cardboard is in it. Those are extensive properties. And the, this is more important than intensive and extensive. Physical and chemical, super important. Physical properties does not involve a change in the chemical makeup. So that would be like melting point. When steel melts, 
even melted steel or solid steel, it's still steel. When you look at an ice cube, a uh, solid ice cube or liquid water, it's still water. Those are physical properties. Chemical properties does involve a change in chemical makeup. And these are things like burning, um, which is, there's really no such thing as burning, it's just combining with oxygen. Um, the same as rusting, it's just combining with oxygen. So if you have a piece of metal and that metal rusts, that rust is now an oxide of that metal. It's a completely different chemical. Those are chemical changes. So it's really important to understand the difference between physical and chemical changes. If you don't get that, you won't get anything in chemistry. Next coming up is measuring stuff. When you measure stuff, everything is going to be in SI units. You're going to hear this word all the time. That's short for Système International Dunites, it's, which is named by the French. Um, it's based on the metric system, and every property is measured in a given unit. So electricity is going to be measured in one unit, weight is measured in a different unit, volume is measured in a different unit, and this is a standard unit for all sciences so that if a biologist comes to you and gives you things in volume and weights you'll be able to understand it even if your training is in chemistry um, so it's universal to all sciences across the globe in all developed countries and most countries use this system as their standard system that all the citizens note except for the United States of course uh, it's got to do everything different there um, scientific notation is used for units that are very, very small, or very, very big, like the distances between planets or the size of molecules. Those are going to be measured in like 10 to the negative powers. And I'll save measuring in SI units for another video. I already have a video on conversion factors. Um, I'll put the link in the description. SI units um, also have significant figures and rounding numbers, and we won't go into this. Your teacher is going to spend an entire class, probably several classes, just going over how to round, and you're going to sit there and be furious because you should know how to round, and everyone should know how to round, but truth is, they're going to spend a week on rounding and elementary math anyway, so I'll just make a video for that. And that's that. Hope that was helpful. Enjoy my notes. Uh, stay tuned for more videos.